Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel, Kotsun. I'm Dennis and today what I'm going to do is show you how to set up a Plast control panel on Amazon Light Cell. Now I know a lot of people, and I'm included, is uh, very apprehensive about starting a project on Amazon. It's kind of like Google Cloud Platform. Man, they're one of the originals, they're one of the big threes, and man, they got so much to offer. And it just is intimidating for a lot of people. But one thing Amazon did is actually made a, a product called AWS Light Cell or Amazon Light Cell that is a direct competitor to DigitalOcean, Linode, or Vulture. And I've been trying their product for a little while and very impressed on it and how easy it is to get up and running. So stick around, we're going to get you started. <laughs> Well, the first thing we need to do is just go ahead and go to aws.amazon.com and if you haven't already signed up for an account go ahead and do so but if you have we need to go ahead and just click sign in to the console and of course once you click sign in and i'm already logged in y'all but when you get inside it'll bring you to this particular page it's your console page and as you could tell, it gives us all the recently visited stuff like light cell and everything I have recently visited. Go ahead and take myself off this uh, for a minute, and but of course I can pop up any time. And what I need to do is now let's just go up here to where it says services. And when you go into that, there's so much you could pick from and everything. But if you look right to your right, you'll see light cell, one of the first ones to offer. And we're gonna go ahead and go into light cell. Of course, it's gonna bring you into the light cell homepage right here. As you can see, I've already got a instance already up and running. So if you don't have one, no problem. It's still gonna have a great uh, instant uh, button there for you. And what we need to do is just go ahead and hit create instance. And once we start that up, it'll bring us into this flex page where It'll show us everything we need to get this instance up and running. And y'all, I'm going to tell you, it's just as easy, if not easier, to do than anything that we've done on Plask or, or Digital Ocean or Vulture or anything like that. Of course, the first location you could pick is your instant location. Now, I've got Ohio Zone A, but you could change your availability right here and just pick any one you want. Pick whatever closest to you or your clients or whatever. Of course, if you're in the United States, they got at least three that you could pick from. But I'm picking, I'm just gonna stay with the Ohio one at this time. And we're gonna go down and pick our instance image. You know, there's some people that likes the Microsoft. Of course, it's a little bit higher on that, but I'm staying on our Linux instance. And we're on a blueprint or what they call out plus off is what we're gonna do on the blueprint. But if you choose to do just the offs only you could go into that and i give you an idea what it looks like okay and you can see when you go into the offs only it, it brings you into all these different ones you could pick but we're going to do out plus offs and i'm going to go down to where you see this says plask hosting stack on ubuntu and then we're going to go ahead and select that and that's kind of like going to the market for uh vulture vulture or digital ocean get the one click install hey they're doing it here and like i said uh amazon makes it so simple to choose we just highlight it we go down if you want to add some kind of script or change your ssh pair key you could do that i'm going to leave it on default it'll automatically assign me one and the last one is pick your plan right now they're offering three months free on these first two or three plans and, and you know i'm telling you right now they are very competitive to digital ocean and to vulture and linode if you look at what they offer right here in my opinion the ten dollar plan is just as competitive not cheaper than uh, than the others and you get more get more gigabytes and the terabytes and everything so you pick what you think's best i'm gonna tell you the ten dollar plan is plenty big enough for anything you want to do but you could want to you could go ahead and do the five and scale it up later if you need it but i'm just going to go ahead and pick to ten dollar plan and the last thing we need to do is go ahead and name it whatever you want to name it and in this particular one i'm just going to put plask 
test on mine. And I'm going to hit create instance. As you can tell, it brought us in this page and it's spinning up by instance right now. It's saying it is pending. And of course, it's already signed a IP4 address and IP6 on the zone that I picked. So as soon as this gets through, and it, it's going to take a few seconds, like all of them now, it's showing running. So now I got two instances running and everything. So what we need to do is everybody go to this tab here called networking and click it. Of course, when you do, it'll bring you in here and it will show you that you got a plus static IP. And where's that? What we need to do is go ahead and set this IP address for create static IP. And we got to attach it to the instance we want. And we, of course, this time it's going to be the plus task. So we're attaching this on the Ohio zone. The PLAS test is the instance I'm attaching, which, and you can identify it any way you want to. Call your static IP anything you want. I'm just going to call mine static test. That way I don't get it confused with any other ones we get. And we're going to go ahead and hit create. And as you could tell, now it has attached itself to that particular instance. And this is going to be the public SP static IP address and of course as long as it's attached to the instant you don't have to pay extra for the IP static address but if you ever detach it they will start charging you so remember that okay and now back into the home screen I went to the home screen of course you could tell I got both of my plastic already in there and we got this set up running it's got a static IP address attached to it and you know in order to get it going now we got to finish it up on you know logging into uh plas setting it up for the first time and stuff and this has been the problem with me with amazon it might be my fault it might be amazon but when i click this little uh browser based terminal of theirs i'm gonna show you what it tells me i think it was like once or twice it ever worked with me but so basically i click it and i get this every time hmm something up something's wrong and it won't allow me to SSH into it or whatever. And here's the thing. In order to use your home terminal off your local computer or putty if you're on Windows or whatever, you're going to have to do a little modification stuff on it or CH mods. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So the next thing we need to do, we need to go over here to Accounts and click it. And it'll come down to a drop down. And what we're going to do, we're going to go up here where it says account okay so you know if you want to find out how to install it through their documentations of course you could search for document but i've already got a documentation open and again here's the uh the the hhp that if you want to get to the exact documentation that i'm using you could just type that in or you can just follow my dir directions and it is pretty much going to take you to the same thing so there's what we did but before i go into it i want to go ahead and show you what i need to do since this is my second instance i don't want it to be called the same thing as my first one so i'm just going to rename it if this is your first one whatever the 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 first one you got is fine the name if you want to rename it that's fine like that too i'm just going to name this in class task and now what i did is i went on and just opened up a new finders window and uh that way it brought me to this page and i went under i got a file set up it's called dot ssh where i hold all my ssh keys but wherever you put your keys at it doesn't matter where you put it you keep it there whatever the case may be but and then you want to you could just go ahead and bring it over to it and just drop it in and it automatically place it for you then i could just exit out of there and i'm going to leave this in at this time and once we get to a certain point now we're back to our uh, terminal and I'm gonna go show you everything I'm gonna go slow with it and so y'all bear with me I'm not gonna be like everybody else and just start typing out stuff and tell you go here and not explaining stuff to you you know that's not my way so uh, we we gonna do first and we're gonna type in this s or the pseudo ch mod 400 in our terminal so what we need to do is just type in s sudo and, and what sudo means is a super user is kind of giving you root privileges without being a root user at this time 
in ch mod is basically you're going to be a do a change or modification to uh in our case we're going to use the 400 and what 400 is the first one you see the four is the owner the owner is us and we're going to make it a four because the ford is read only that's all we need to do is read only and uh, then you got group and users Group and users don't have no permission, so that's what zero stands for. And then what we don't do is we're going to click enter, and it's going to ask for your passcode. So just type in your passcode that you got to get in that you set up for Amazon at the time. And, of course, it you see this as file usage, and it gives you all these other entrants. Don't worry about that. And now we're going to do this uh, next thing again. We're going to type in sudo ch mod 400 and if i you know i'm trying not to go fast here's the thing we typed in that there's no sense in trying to uh just start typing in i'm gonna tell you an easy way to do it go back to where you stored your uh default key or your private key or wherever you want it and in my case i got it here and we're going to highlight it and we're going to drag it over to the terminal and i'm going to just let go of it pretty much it and then when i let go of it it's in there so I got sudo chmod 400 under wherever it is. And then I'm going to click enter again. And, of course, they're showing no errors, which is, is great. That's always a good thing. And I'm going to scroll up so y'all can see what I'm doing when I'm doing it. And so here's the next thing, y'all, this ssh-i. And this is what we need to type in in order to connect our instance to light cell using our ssh-i. So what I'm need to do is type in SSH hyphen I and click enter. All right, now since we got the SSH dash I enter, now what we need to do is basically go S, let me go back in here, SSH dash I, and we'll make a space. And then what it says, it wants the private, the path to the private username. Again, you could either do what you did or you could copy and paste. But basically, just drag it back over again and put it in. And then when you get through with that, it also asks for the username. And here's the thing, y'all. We got to go our username at public IPs. And it's not the username you think it is. So what we need to do is go back to your light cell homepage, as like this one I'm in, and go to the instance that you got running and click it. And when you click it, it'll bring you into this page. Of course, when you go down, as you can see, as you can see, it's got my IP address, my IPv6 address, and here's the thing: it's got your username. In this case, the username is Ubuntu. So that is what we put in the place of the username. So we'll go back to your terminal and type in Ubuntu and Let's go back up here to this. And then and here's this username at public IP address. So let's go back over here and copy the IP address. Copy and go back to our terminal and hit the at symbol and paste your IP address. And when you do that, it will basically should go ahead and give you access to everything all right it did it gave us access to our ubuntu and then of course this y'all all familiar with this do we recognize it they don't recognize it do we trust it yes and click enter and now it's permanently added you to the where you're able to access all your uh server and everything through your own cli or terminal or whatever case of course when I it says Ubuntu at youthful hyphen haslet and again well now as you can tell and here's the thing if you want to go ahead and update it or whatever you need to do before you do anything you can I would do it if I was you it says it's got 148 updates to apply immediately so just remember this when you do, try to update it's going to take a few minutes and i'm going to pause we're going to do it but i'm not going to just fly through here i'm just going to let you do and, and then you could do just a sudo apt update and click enter and then as you can tell it's going to start updating everything and as soon as it gets through well it did it apparently updated it pretty quickly all right and now let's do sudo out 
upgrade because it was on 18. So we're going to upgrade it. Yep. Let me see. Pseudo app. I forgot the R in there. Upgrade. And of course, now it is putting in, and yes, you want to continue. It's going to upgrade it to the newer long term version. It should be hopefully the 20.04 long term. And when it gets through, I will get back with you. Okay, everybody installed it up to a certain point, and I get this package configuration uh, basically a, uh, a notice. It says, basically, do I want to keep the version I'm on or whatever? I'm going to install the install the Packager's Maintainer version instead of to keep the one that I got. So we knew that, and then you hit OK, and it will continue on. It's coming. I don't remember this the last time, y'all, but it's asking, do I want the local changes to be overridden? You can either type yes or no. I'm just going to put no at this time. But... Well, let's just change it to yes, see what it does. We're going to change it, and it's almost finished. But if you keep it no, you would have to do it manually, so we're going to let it override it. And you see this progress is 99%. It should be done momentarily. As you can tell, everyone, it's already uh, installed everything. And I, but probably should tell you, but I'm going to go back up here to where we first started installing. And, of course, as you could tell, we were... Uh, where the play oh yeah here it is pseudo plask login and uh, we need to use that in order to go ahead and copy that particular one you go all the way down and just hit paste and what that does that'll give you generate your first code to get in and you can use either use the one at the top where it uses the name of your server or the instant or you can use the number or whichever one you want to use it doesn't matter but just go ahead and copy that particular one and go to open up a new tab and click paste and enter and then what it should do is bring me into this particular section here and this is the first thing you see when you go into a plask if anybody ever did one and then just basically go in and type in your contact name or whatever you want to do. And of course, it's already got mine pretty much set up. And then, and just for this particular one, just whatever you want to put as a, a code, I'm just going to type in a code. And we're going to go ahead and get this one very confirmed and confirm it. All right, click Enter Plask. And, of course, as you can tell, it's setting up Plask panel. It's configuring a web server. If anybody have already used Plask, this is what, how it first starts. This is how easy it is for Amazon light cell setting it up. The hardest thing, I guess, if you don't got that in that terminal running, you got to do a few more modification in order to get it running like I did. But that's not hard. That's uh, I forgot that on there for you. I'm telling you right now, I've been very happy with their service, uh, which I've been happy with uh, all the other services I've done. But I just want to let y'all know that. Click subscribe and like my channel, y'all. Thank y'all.